Hello everybody. I wanted to uh, do this video to give you some information. Um, and uh, bear with me as I go through the video. I, um, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that was praying for me, all the prayer warriors. Uh, there's people that I don't even know that were praying for me. And um, thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I felt the prayers. I felt the love. Um, I want I want you all to know that um, in, in our home we we, we wear masks uh, when we're out and uh, I wear them when I go to work. We have to when we go to work. Um, I want you to know that I did every precaution that needed to be done, um, especially when I came home from work from the family. And um, I don't know how I got it, but the thing is, is that I got it. And um, it was a it was a shock to me. Uh, there was a, there was a period there. I was wondering, you know, trying to figure out where I where I had where I had been. But every place I had been, I I uh, was at work and home, and uh, I wore the masks. And I, I washed my hands when I got home, and um, and so it happened. Um, went to the hospital, and you know my wife uh, takes me there, and uh, real quickly they, you know, they they wheel me in, and you know, bye bye, and there's no. Uh, she felt bad because she dropped me off. Um, I was not in a good, um, uh, I wasn't healthy at all. They took me in and um, I got to tell you that uh, the room that they put me in seemed like a, a, a room that maybe they had cleaned out and I stayed in that room while they were checking me in and checking my vitals and everything and, and uh, I stayed there for about six hours before I actually went to a room. And I got to tell you that these nurses and the doctors and everybody that is involved in taking care of, of not just the regular patients, but the patients of COVID, these people are working hard. Hats off to them. I pray that God will just bless them tremendously. They're working very hard. Um, I, went to my, I went to the fourth floor. They gave me a room. And I gotta tell you that I was really uh, amazed at all the precautions that they're taking. Uh, I know, I've heard it all on the news and from people from even from work and I've heard it from everywhere that, you know, um, I have a right to not wear a mask and uh, it's a hoax and uh, they're, they're fudging the numbers and whatever it is you wanna believe, you believe it because you're gonna believe it anyway. But let me tell you something. For the rest of you who are wondering, when you hear people say that the hospitals aren't full, when you hear people say that there's plenty of room, you ask them if they had COVID and how many days they spent in the hospital. Because I'm gonna tell you, anybody that's there today, tonight, fighting for their lives, some of them, they will tell you a different story. They're working hard. They wear a, uh, uh, they wear a, I wear this mask everywhere I go. They don't wear this. They wear a resp, like a, with cause canisters on the side. That's what they wear with the face shield, with their gown and their gloves. And before they even go into my room, they're gowned up. They call me on the phone and say, Mark, we're going in. Do you need anything? Because they get everything ready to go into that room and close that door immediately. And they go do what they need to do, take the vitals, do whatever it is they got to do. And then they degown. They walk out that door. They get a wipe and they wipe off their mask. 
really, really well. And then they wipe their hands, another wipe. And then they take the mask off. And then they clean the inside. And they do that every single time they go in somebody's room. And I'm thinking to myself, because I had a, my second room that I had, had a window on it and I could see the nurse's station. I could see what they were doing and I could see them do this every single time. And I'm thinking to myself, we are complaining about wearing this out there and they are much more heavily, heavily protected. Gosh, they're working hard. I thank God for every nurse and every doctor and everybody that was, people that were drawing blood and I thank God for them. They're working hard, they're putting their lives at risk. There, there was a day that they were excited, even the doctor and the nurses, the doctor that came to see me, the pulmonologist and the nurses, they were excited because they were, they thought that that they were gonna require a mandate, a mask, that Ducey was gonna acquire a mask for all Arizonans. And they were so excited. They said, they said the influx of people are, 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 are gonna slow down, we'll stop the spread. We'll slow it down, we won't stop it, but we'll slow it down. And they were excited and it didn't happen. And they were so disappointed, but they kept doing their job and they did it well, and the hospital did a fantastic job. I was in my first room on the fourth floor, and the next day, they brought in another bed. There wasn't room, in, there, there really wasn't much room for another bed, but they had to bring in another bed. They put the rails, and then they put the curtains up, so there would be privacy. And then they moved me from that room, because everybody on that room that I was, that floor that I was on, had heart monitors. These were all people with COVID. And they said, you don't have a heart monitor, so we're gonna move you to the next floor. And they moved me to the next floor. And the same thing was happening on that floor. Rooms with one bed now had two. So when somebody tells you that the hospitals aren't full, you ask them how many days they spent there. Because one, they will never get in there unless they have COVID. So it's, it's, the information they're getting is, is, is secondhand, thirdhand, fourthhand, okay? It's not even real. I'm telling you, I've been in there. This is real, people. You don't want this. You don't want your family to have it. You don't want to pass it on to anybody else. You really don't. I'm at home and I'm talking to you on my couch I'm still on oxygen. I'm weaning myself off. I'm taking the walks that I need for my lungs because I got to go see the pulmonologist next week. And sometimes it's difficult. But I got to do it to get better. And my lungs are getting stronger and they are getting stronger. But I'm not 100%. I went through this I believe because, because I need to tell you, somebody needs to hear this, that, it's, that, that this COVID is real. And the one thing that we know for sure, the one thing that all the doctors in that hospital know for sure about COVID is that we don't know enough about COVID. So there are no experts right now. Nobody has the answer, the antidote, Nobody has anything right now other than it will do what it wants to do when it wants to and how it wants to. And it doesn't matter how young or how old you are and everybody is different. Well, I sat in my room and the doors are all closed. All I could hear was code blue, code blue, code blue. At one point, they told me that, that they wanted to put me on a respirator. And I said to the nurse, I don't want to be on a respirator. She says, well, this is what you got to do. You got to lay on your stomach when you go to sleep. 
keeping in mind I had the oxygen 24 seven. You gotta get out of bed when you don't feel like getting out of bed and walking to the window, back to your bed, back to the window, back to your bed. And you gotta blow into this machine, inhale, and get that ball as high as you can get it. You see, their goal was to keep me off of that ventilator. And praise God, they did. I was working hard. I was working very hard and through the grace of God and God's love, he gave me the strength to get out of bed and to take that walk. So I'm doing the video because I know a lot of you have been praying for me and my family and I, and I love you and I thank you for that. A lot of prayer warriors out there. And I wanted to give you an update of how I'm doing. I got out of the hospital about five days ago, maybe six, and uh, I'm getting better. Teresa gave me a haircut today, so I look really good. My hair was very long and it was everywhere. I didn't even recognize the man in the mirror this morning, uh, but she gave me a nice haircut and, and I look good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling stronger every day and I'm weaning myself off the oxygen. And uh, I can't wait till next week when I see the pulmonologist and and I don't know if he's gonna take x-rays. I don't know what he's going to do, but I know in the name of Jesus, he's gonna find that my lungs are good and healthy and strong, and I will be able to head back into the workforce and, and, and head out into that world again. And, 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 and let, me, let me also give you some information so that you know. I asked the doctor, I said, um, I don't want to, um, I, I got a question. I said, will I get, um, will I get it again? We don't know. One of the things I heard before I got COVID was once you got it, you can't get it again. You're immune to it. That's not true. They don't know. Again, back to what I was saying, the one thing we know about COVID is we don't know enough about COVID. Okay, so you can believe what you want. Uh, I suggest you wear a mask. Uh, you have your kids wear a mask. Uh, get them used to it, washing their hands. Uh, sanitizers in your house and wipe the doorknobs every so often, you know, maybe once a day, maybe every other day. Um, you want to be as vigilant as you can, as much as you can to not get this started in your home. Um, and like I said, it was through the grace of God and his mercies that I'm here right now talking to you. And uh, I know I'm going through this because I need to give the testimonies. I've been giving testimonies throughout uh, the week, talking to people on the phone and uh, sharing certain things. And, and I know that's why uh, God wanted me to go through this well, he didn't want me to go through this. He got me through it. I got it because I got it. God doesn't give this to anybody. I got it because I got it. That's all that matters. God got me through it. And, 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 and that is the most important thing. And, and I believe that I didn't get this just so I could be healed and move on. I got this so I can share it with other people. Give people information, first-hand information about what's going on in the hospitals, what, what, what COVID does, right? I had fevers of 103, 104 before I went to the hospital. I had headaches on the side, on the top, and on the top and all around my head. Like it was like a crown I was wearing that was, just, the headaches were bad, nausea, vomiting, you, 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 you name it, I had it all. And it wore my body down to the point that COVID started working on my lungs. And we, I didn't realize how bad it was until I went into the hospital. And I realized how bad it was when they put me on oxygen. When they put me on oxygen and then they take, took it off for just a split second and I was already having trouble breathing. See, that's what COVID's about. It attacks your lungs. And so, we all need to breathe. 
So thank you so much. I hope this uh, update of how I'm doing um, will um, encourage you uh, and uh, continue to pray for the family. Um, we, we still need the prayers. I'm getting stronger, but I, 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 got, I got a ways to go. And um, I pray that God will protect your family, he bless your family. And uh, I'm praying for people now that uh, I've been home and I'm, and I'm doing better. And, um, and so if you have any special prayer requests, send them. Be more than happy to put you on our prayer board and we will pray for you every day. And um, I, I, I love you guys. And that's why I'm doing this video to give you an update. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and know that I'm getting stronger and God loves me and God loves you and God bless and take care.